Hello, I'm Martine Croxall. In this edition of Extreme Weather, more than 500 confirmed dead in Thailand's floods. Millions suffer power cuts as snow hits the northeastern United States. A new report predicts climate change will bring more extreme weather. And we take a look at the world's coldest places. First to Thailand, where officials have confirmed the death toll from three months of flooding has climbed to more than 500. Residents and emergency services in the Thai capital, Bangkok, are desperately fighting to keep the floodwaters at bay. But the authorities have ordered 12 of the city's 50 districts to be evacuated. Floods are advancing from the north and west and are threatening the city's underground railway system, industrial districts and even the headquarters set up to deal with the emergency. The government estimates the damage so far at more than $4 billion. There's been some improvement in Thailand's northern provinces, though, where the worst of the flooding has passed and a clear-up operation is underway. Parts of Europe have also been hit by flooding. Italy's longest river, the Po, has been swollen by torrential rain and people living in low-lying areas are on alert to move out. In Turin, the river rose by four metres just a week after six people were killed by flash floods in Genoa. More than three million residents in northeast USA were left without power as an early unseasonal blizzard caused major disruption. Many households across Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey and New York State were cut off for more than a week. Meteorologists at the Vestas Data Centre say an unusual combination of high northeasterly winds, a very cold Canadian weather front and a low pressure system to the southeast were to blame. One major casualty of the freak storm was Central Park in New York, where around a thousand trees came down in the snow dump. Because the blizzard happened so early in the season, many of the trees were still in leaf, so the snow stayed on the branches and weighed them down. But despite the early chill, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA, says it's too early to know if this winter will be any worse than average. Speaking of cold spells, on each episode of Extreme Weather, we'll be taking a look at some of the most extreme places on Earth, the wettest, the hottest and the coldest. What's it like to live in these places? Well, spare a thought for the scientists who live at the Russian research station at Vostok, near the South Pole. According to the World Meteorological Organization, it's officially the coldest place on Earth, reaching a record minus 89.2 degrees Celsius on July the 21st, 1983. It's also one of the driest, with an average precipitation of only 10 centimetres a year. And even in summer, the thermometer never rises above freezing. In fact, the warmest temperature ever recorded at Vostok was minus 12.2 degrees Celsius. Texas continues to suffer one of the worst droughts on record, with conditions being likened to the Dust Bowl era of the 1930s. Enormous sandstorms, known as haboobs, have swept across the state. One monster was an incredible two kilometres high and travelling at more than 100 kilometres an hour. Meteorologists say people living on the parched plains of Texas could see more dust storms as a record drought tightens its grip. The Global Drought Monitor, issued by the Department of Space and Climate Physics at University College London, clearly shows the extent of the extreme drought covering the southwest United States. Some parts of the world are likely to face more extreme weather events in the future. Scientists from the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, say that global warming means that heat waves, droughts and floods will be more intense and frequent in the future. Global warming is causing the Earth to warm up and the atmosphere is warming up. A warmer atmosphere holds more water, holds more energy. It sucks up more water, it can deposit more water. For that reason, we will be seeing a change in the frequency, intensity and geographical distribution of things like heat waves, droughts and floods. Western Alaska has been pounded by what some weather experts are calling a snowicane, a combination of hurricane force winds and heavy snow. The storm, said to be the worst in 40 years, caused flooding and some damage to buildings when it made landfall on the Bering Sea coast. Gusts of up to 140 kilometres an hour were reported on the Seward Peninsula on the west coast of Alaska. Finally, on this edition of Extreme Weather, forecasting could become even more accurate thanks to a new Earth-observing NASA satellite. 
the Delta II rocket will orbit the planet at about 800 kilometers. It's aiming to provide better understanding of why extreme weather events occur and to predict them. That's all for this edition of Extreme Weather. Join me next time for all the latest climate and weather news from around the world.